Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 38 of the Sharp Shooters Podcast. I am your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw, aka Mr. B Sharp on the ones and twos, threes, fours, and fives and sixes and all that good stuff. Uh appreciate everybody for coming on to the show tonight. Of course, it's gonna be a short night because it ain't too much to talk about. But we're gonna bring up the guys you already know. We got my main man Tez in the house. What's the deal? What's the deal? We got Gucci Mane in the house, aka <laughs> Jason in the house tonight. Burr! <laughs> Big bird. <laughs> and another reason why this pod is gonna be short because I feel bro, i, I one day. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to uh, drop the uh, <laughs> the stuff that don't make the pod. <laughs> That's probably more funny, <laughs> more funny than anything. It's very, very controversial. <laughs> it's very, very controversial. I'll put it like that. That's about as far as I Because I know we will offend a whole lot of people <laughs> on the stuff. Just basically men talk. How about that? Just man talk. If we had that type of talk, we'll offend everybody. <laughs> but like I said, it's gonna be a short night, so we just go ahead and talk about it. So we're gonna kick it off. Let's talk about the Celtics run right now. Now, hopefully, man, I'm tripping. But uh, the Celtics, um. A lot of folks are saying this run is super easy. I'm like, oh well, it's a run. <laughs> <laughs> you still it don't matter. Or oh, not, because a certain somebody had plenty of easy runs. I ain't gonna say the name because I don't want his lovers to get offended. No offense, Jason. You Michael Jordan? <laughs> I don't think it's Mr. Michael Jordan. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. You know who it wasn't. <laughs> but uh, I, I believe this is the most complete team uh, in the playoffs. Like, they literally have no weakness. It, the closest thing they probably have weakness is probably down low. And they about to get back. Hopefully, uh, Pazingas. In the finals, but if everything ends tonight, it's a t- we got nine days before the NBA finals. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a short. Time. <laughs> that, I mean, not a short time. That's a long time. But what y'all think about this Celtics run so far? I mean, I don't think you can really complain about the run. They've been pretty much a you know con- a consistent team the entire year for the most part. You know, and they're players are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. The stars are doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So I think this is kind of what's expected. And I think even if these teams that they were going up against were at full strength, we'd still be in the same spot that, that we're in. So they're just they're just handling business. Uh, I don't like them. <laughs> I, don't like well, them. I think a lot of folks don't like the Celtics. Yeah, I don't like them. I don't like them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I guess people are saying is the run was easy because of the injuries. Um, and we talked off the pod uh, before we started. The only injury that I think that maybe has some significance to to any to even get him a challenge would have been like the Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler with Miami in that first round probably would have been a much much more competitive series uh, had he been healthy. But I still think Celtics probably would have won. Actually, they should win. Like. On paper, like you said, they had no weaknesses. On paper, they should they should win out. You know, what I'm saying this should be their their championship to claim, mm-hmm. um, based on the roster and how they play. Um, only thing about it is, when you go through the playoffs and you don't play nobody, and you have an easy run. When you get to the finals and you finally play a team that's worth some, we've seen other teams uh, struggle. Uh, when that happens, uh, and that that player that that uh, Bransky was talking about earlier that he didn't want to mention, he he proved that to us that when you have a cakewalk in the conference finals and you get to the finals, uh, you end up getting hit in the mouth. Uh, so 
I don't know. Uh, like I said before, this team usually finds a way uh, to mess it up. They've been young, so that's a, that's a, one of the reasons. But for whatever reason, they always find a way to mess it up. I'm counting on them to do the same thing because I'm picking the Mavericks to go all the way. Uh, so uh, hopefully they they mess it up next round. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't think you can. I don't think I don't think you can just discount they them coming out there and dominate. This is what a number one seed is supposed to do. <laughs> that, that's why they had the best record in the league. Right. <laughs> I'm for like sure. they they literally had the best record in the league for a reason, and I'm like they look. I, I ain't gonna lie. I've been looking like I need to be working for ESPN. Not saying I I be right most of the time anyway, but. <laughs> on my basketball table, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been killing, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm really feeling myself because a lot of this stuff that I've been saying been happening. I like this whole Jason Tatum disrespect. I don't understand it. I, I really don't understand it. I'm like he done a lot, and the man only 26 years old to get as far. He done way more probably. He, Outside of awards, he probably done more in the playoffs than Michael Jordan. No, he has. Up to this point, I'm talking about 26. I ain't talking about 91 in <laughs> Michael Jordan. I said outside of the awards. Outside of the awards. In the playoffs, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I'm, sure. just, I'm just talking about, well, yeah. not just like strictly scoring. I'm just talking about like getting this team to like conference mm-hmm. finals and mm-hmm. NBA finals. Now they're going back to the NBA finals and he just 26 yeah. years old. So it's it's mind boggling to me. And then they talk bad about uh, Jalen Brown all, all season, talking about he doesn't have a left hand. <laughs> well, that left hand. He he he's going on with that right, right. And every time I see him go left, he's still killing you. I'm like, bro, he wasn't the number three overall pick for no reason. If it was just that simple, you would have been stopped. But that shows you how skilled he is, and also when I one thing I I gotta confess, I really hate this, and I really wish they'd just get rid of it. The whole conference finals MVP thing, I think, the stupidest thing in the world. Yes. Oh, yeah, it is. yeah, I think that's the most most irrelevant award in the in the league, right next to no, right behind that is the end season tournament. Oh my god, participation trophies. And that's all it was. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um if they finish the deal, man, they they up there with like some of the best teams because I think Drew Holiday being that I said it day one when they got him. That's the piece that they need right there. Like other guys is cool, but we got a guy that is a real lockdown defender and can actually go get his own shot and make plays and all that. And look what he did against the Pacers in the last three games, just play after play. And that shows you what he can do. But we'll see. But I just ask y'all this before who y'all think they well. It never happened before, mm-hmm. but assuming that the Mavs do win tonight, who do y'all? No, we'll we'll say the NBA Finals uh, preview for next week. We'll save it for next week. But who you think will face them in the finals? Uh, the Mavs. Yeah, it's it's, it's got to be the Mavs. So. Okay, yeah. now you know what? Let, let let me tell you about that question. Let's just assume that it's the Mavs. Until it happened, until let's say you won four games, right? Then that's how I operate when it comes to uh, basketball. But right. I think each round is like a matchup problem, bro. Right? Like it doesn't matter about what this team uh, seed is. It's all about matchups. That's in any sport, especially it's big in basketball. Like Minnesota was like a bad matchup for the Nuggets, right? For many reasons, but they terrible against the Mavs for a reason. Yeah, with their uh, perimeter scores. So 
with uh, the Celtics and the Mavs, I believe the Celtics would be a big problem for the uh, uh, Mavs only because I know they're going to put Drew Holiday on uh, Kyrie, but the Kyrie is Kyrie. But putting Jalen Brown on uh, Luka, Luka, and Luka has a problem when Jalen Brown is on him from what I've seen. Not saying he'll just completely stop him, but it will, it will really cause problems, which leads one other guy, Jason Tatum. I don't know who you're going to put on him. I don't know who you're going to put on uh, Brown. So, mm. I mean, that's interesting, bro. I, I don't, I haven't really, I haven't really dived into the matchups, it, you know, if they were to play each other. But yeah, you, you bring up an interesting point. Uh, Jason Tatum being the X factor. Uh, man, I just think that ultimately these series, uh, despite so so, we we got two potential well, a potential sweep, and then we have a definite sweep that happened with Indiana and uh and Boston. Despite these being four game series, they have been the most competitive sweeps. Mm-hmm. Like uh, every game that Indiana game, Indiana could have been could be up three one right now. Yep, easily. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and and, the, and this series uh, could be could go the other way. Like I think Dallas has come back in every single game. So, uh, yep, I would I would I would venture to believe that a finals matchup between these two teams, between the Mavs and Boston, would come down to who plays better when the game is on the line. Uh, and if that's the case, man, it's tough to bet against Luka Doncic, man. Down the stretch of games. I know Jalen Brown hit some big shots, um, but Luca and Kyrie are two of the best closers that you're going to get. Like, I, I don't know mm-hmm. who else you – I mean, if you start who are the best closers in the league right now, if you were to ask yourself that top five, both of those players are in the top five. I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So, so when you talk about these games coming to close games like that, Man, I, I think they have the advantage in a in a close game. I think the Celtics will have to literally beat the hell out of them in, in a couple games in the series in order to to pull off a win. If it's a close game, I think Jason Tatum up there too. I think so. I think so. Jason usually uh great at closing out games, but it's, it's been like Jalen Brown in the playoffs though, closing out games for them. Yeah. I'm about to say He's been I don't I, the one thing I don't like what the media is doing is that they've been trying to put those put them two against each other. I don't know why. Like Kyrie, if Kyrie's not playing with the Mavs right now, the Mavs don't, don't make it past the second round. For sure. True. So they are one game away from the finals. Shows you how big of a difference it is just to have somebody like Kyrie on your team. So, because they would have just just been like how they doing with um, the Mavs on Ant Man. They really don't trust everybody else. They mm-hmm. well, we gonna well, we gonna focus on you. But imagine yeah. if you put Kyrie on Minnesota, the floor would probably be wide open for Ant Man. Then, yep, yeah. So it's a bit different. Shout out to Dallas, man, for making that trade for PJ Washington and and uh, Gafford. Super Cause, underrated trade because because I think they have the best team in the NBA since that trade, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's something like at the March or some they they record is like the best. Oh wow, yeah. yeah. And, and those guys they playing well, bro. Like I I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you, I didn't think PJ Washington would get there and play like he's playing right now. Like he showed flashes. Yeah. Uh, with Charlotte, but I was like, mm. it, it was other reasons why PJ Washington was just like, eh, come on. <laughs> yeah. But I think, like, you just like a fresh start when you get that fresh start somewhere else, new scenery. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you can be around great players. Mm-hmm. It like it, 
it just uh brings the best out of you. So I'm really, really happy for him for real. No state taxes. And no state taxes. No money for households. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> it, it's, definitely, it's definitely more money for households. I can promise you that. Yep. <laughs> a, a whole lot more money for some households, but we'll see. <laughs> But we'll see, man. But let's move on. Since we talked about Kyrie and Luca, they had the top five, like best backcourt. And I'm just just going off the top of my head. I think I'm not mistaken. I can't even remember who won just that quickly. I think it was Greeny on ESPN, Mike Greenberg. Mm-hmm. I think he had. Was Steph and Clay number one? Yeah, I think so. It might have been. And then I remember uh, Byron Scott, uh, Magic Johnson. I think I seen – no, 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 no. He didn't have Isaiah. And, uh, no, no. Isaiah I, Dubois. I don't think he Matter of fact, I don't, I don't know why I wasn't prepared for this. Was uh, Chris Paul and uh, James Harden on it? No. They should be up there. I don't know, bro. So. Not top five ever. I mean, they on paper. Yeah. They didn't win nothing, but if they won a championship, they would be top five for sure. Ever? No. Yep. Oh hell. Not ever. Like you gotta think about backcourts that have that have won. Just think about um. Uh, so are we talking about most decorated or are we talking about just like like you can put like D fish and uh Kobe D fish and Kobe they got five. So so in a two on two matchup, who are you taking? But you're not two on two. No, I'm just saying because because if we do this, we're gonna be like who has the most championships, but those those backcourts might we, not necessarily be the most but they not that they but see the, the whole thing is not about most skilled now most skill is a whole nother conversation right. but the bit top five duos is yeah, different. yeah that's just like uh like we did top five duos like ever in nba history of course you have like kobe and shad you have mike and scotty you have steph and katie you will have uh Magic Kareem, D Wade, Bron, yeah. like stuff like that. And so what I, do they? I don't think Kyrie and Luca can be in there if we if we talking about like accolades. And I don't think they top five. Not right now. That's why I'm saying I don't believe they can. It is it, no way you can make these guys top five right now. Would a championship put them there? A championship can definitely put them there. With 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 Kyrie having two, Luca having one. Luca had one in it in us. You, you know, will have an argument for five. Right. You will have an argument for five. I don't think you go past five though. You will have an argument. That's at yeah. best. But if we talk about more most skill, I don't think it, a backcourt is more skilled than them ever. Yeah, I don't think so. It was. It was. I don't know. You have to think of yeah. Yeah, no, I don't think there's no more, more skill than them. But there's some backcourts that didn't didn't win championships that could have been like the month. Think about Monte Ellis and Steph Curry had that just stay mm. in Golden State. Yeah, I they probably that. wouldn't have won no championships because they needed shooting. But as far as skill, Monte Ellis is a walking thirty pack. We know what Steph became any yeah. night. Uh, but who say Steph would? See, Clay works off. Well, Monte would probably took the ball out of Steph's hands a lot. He did when they were there. Yeah, so you got to take cut down some of them dribbles. Clay is just like, I can catch and shoot this thing. <laughs> like it ain't nothing. The man scored like sixty points off thirty, uh, off thirteen dribbles. So where, where, where do you put Stockton and Hornet check? Huh? Where do you put Stockton and Hornet check? They not up there. They don't have no ring. They ain't got nothing to put them up there. They they probably won more games than majority of the people. But they didn't win the game. 
That's that, that's how you sep- <laughs> that's how you separate yourself. You can say, "Oh, we had this." Like, matter of fact, run TMC. Like, oh yeah, they got a cool name. Yeah, they they look flashy and all that. But do we put them up there as one of the best bit threes ever? No. 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 You don't think about them. You can't put them up there. Why? Because they don't have no ring. They not up there with like Tim Duncan and Ginobili and Parker. So, so why why is it when we do individual awards, we can put players in there with our rings? You say with individual award because there's a lot of other things that factor into it with individuals. Because now you got MVPs, you got all NBAs, and it's a whole bunch of other things. The only thing that can separate you rings matter, but all all that other stuff matters. Right. Like What's Robert. It, like Robert, it, it like should Robert. matter for duos too, though. No, nah, because, about, because you know, unless you got them together, I see what you're saying. Like unless you you made those accomplishments, because what Lucas got, how many first teams? Yeah, it's, it's five. A bunch. It's a bunch. Since he, I think what, he only missed one year since he's been. Yeah, there. it's five out of six years. Five out of six. So, but he didn't do that with Kyrie. So you can't yeah. you can't bring that accolade into. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You team. can't. And then even if you want to uh, do that, let's just use Run TMC for uh, example again. Can you name anything that they won, like individually? Like no. they may at best probably got a second. Chris Mullen probably got all NBA second team or Tim Hardaway got a second team, maybe first. I doubt it. With mm. all those uh, top guards in the league, I doubt it. Yeah, I doubt it at that time. And then you got Mitch Richmond. Up there, he probably got at best a second team at best. Like mm. it see all that stuff factors in rings just, like help separate you. Now, if you say for like Tony Parker and Ginobili and Duncan, there's a lot of stuff you can factor in, like MVP, six man, finals MVP. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to think of some backcourts that that maybe maybe won a championship or didn't won a championship that maybe we're forgetting about. That's why I say Isaiah and uh, Joe Dumars, like they both can say they finals MVP. Mm, yeah. And they had two rings. So it's that's why I say it's a lot of stuff. What it's about uh lot. what about Houston? Houston? With Clyde. Just trying to think about they won championship. No, that was just that was just no nah, Clyde just came there for that last one. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I got a question. Who is a a, a backcourt duo that you think doesn't get enough respect, but or it's just kind of underrated that people forget about or don't talk about? Like currently or just all time? All time. Oh, oh. Like one popped up in my head and I was thinking, like, damn. Like, well, who you got? That that will get the Steve ball. Steve Francis right? and Catino Mobley. Oh, that's probably the one. Yeah, that's probably the one. That's the one that I think I think started this debate. Because I think Kevin Garnett mentioned them on a, a podcast episode, mm-hmm. and they were some dogs, and they was animals. Dogs, bro. But no. what separates them? You then that's when you start to get down to the nitty gritty. What separates these guys when you really trying to see who's the best? Gonna come down to them awards. Gonna come down mm-hmm. to them rings. Right. That's where. You, that's how you separate them. Right. Like yeah, you ain't trying to minimize what they did. Like, I ain't even trying to uh, minimize run TMC. But we talking about the best of all time. Like, groups. Like, nah. Mm-hmm. They they not up there. They not mm-hmm. up there with, especially we just talking about straight back courts. Nah. Mm-hmm. I think I, people that are definitely, that should be up there. Like, only reason I say D Fish and uh, Kobe should be up there because, of course, Derek Fish was like a, a bit time clutch player. He had definitely hit shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we know a lot of the accolades come from Kobe. Right. True. Well, pretty much all of it. Oh, I was going to say, it's you know, probably right. like yeah, 80 you, 20. You can put a bunch of players in, in uh, Fisher's spot. No, I'm saying, well, the thing is, do they have a chemistry for that? Like, we say we can put people in a certain spot, but chemistry matters, dog. 
I mean, it does. It does. But I mean, because I mean, it could have probably messed up the run, like what this person does. Yeah. What Fisher did. Fisher, we assume, Fisher. We're Go assuming ahead. that the chemistry will work, though. Right? Yeah. And they develop that over time. It's not like. Yeah. You assume that it'll work. Yeah. I'm about to say the one chemistry <laughs> that I know that worked, like the last one you like really just seen that just work like that was probably like that actually one was KD and uh Steph. Yeah. Yeah. It that don't like, always work. That's that yeah. that it's like peanut butter and jelly with them two. <laughs> like but, but but see that the X factor with that is is like you said, Clay. Clay <laughs> would fit in the backcourt with anybody because he don't need the ball. <laughs> yep. Do you yeah. dribble three times and score 30, bro? Like you fit in any backcourt. And yeah, that's true. And that and see, and that's what I be talking about right there. Um, like you take certain pressure off certain guys when you have when you can just put them at a third spot and they not at I about I truly believe this. If in 2015, maybe the Warriors win, maybe. But after that, they're not winning no more mm-hmm. if they don't get KD. 2016, of course, we know what happened. 2017, they don't get uh, KD, they're not winning. They're definitely not beating those boys, and you would not have, hear about the dynasty that you hear from these guys now. Mm-hmm. Steph separated himself a little bit by winning that championship in uh was it uh 2022 I think it was 2022 so, yeah yeah so yeah he separated himself by winning that like that helped him in a lot of ways like as an all timer right. like just up for point guards like that I think that sealed him for number two right like you passed Isaiah on that part just by doing that. You finally got your finals MVP and the way you led them. It's just like how Dirt sealed himself top five all time when right. he went on his run. Like, it, it wasn't even no question no more. Like, I, I got a backcourt. What do we rank? What do we rank this backcourt? MJ and Ron Harper. Oh. Uh, now we got we got MJ carrying the bulk of the the individual awards, but they both have the three championships, three peaks. Uh, Ron Harper really was no slouch. In, I think, in I think he was if, very very instrumental. In I think if they, if they got Ron Harper uh, before the injury, they would have been more dominant than what they were. That's true. That's, that's true. That's oh true. yeah. Because Ron Harper was a dog. Yeah. I don't think folks really realize that if they, if they really got Ron Harper pre- before the injuries, oh my yeah. God. You yeah. thought you thought they – and that's why I don't understand, like, when folks say, especially Draymond, think that <laughs> they can beat the 96 Bulls. And then I don't know why certain people say the 2016 uh, Warriors is the greatest team ever. I'm like, you can't be the greatest team ever if you didn't win. Right, like your record don't mean nothing if you don't win. This is true. Right, I'm right. like, let let's be honest. You guys couldn't beat LeBron, Kyrie, K. Love. I'm gonna put it like this. Y'all, neither one of y'all, Kyrie, not Kyrie, uh, Clay or Steph, can guard Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and both of them are lockdown defenders. Right. Like, who you want to put on? Like, we can just say, hey, hey, Rob, get on Steph. Bro, if we being honest. That is a nightmare for him. If, if we being honest and we talking about the Bulls, especially that second, that second version of the Bulls, that second 3P version, they was all defenders. Ron Harper at 6'6 six, six was a defender. Jordan, we already know he's a defender. Mm-hmm. Scottie Pippen, defenders. Uh, Rodman, a defender. And whichever white seven footer they put whichever in there, white guy, <laughs> seven footer they put in there was good for playing defense and six fouls. So, like, they literally, they really were a defensive team. That's especially that second, that second version of. Them. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. But I just think about backcourts, man. Like, where do you put MJ and Ron Harper then? Like, yeah, I don't think they up there. Now, you can, but I don't think Ron I, did. I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't think Ron individually did did, did, enough. did enough. I never looked at Ron Harper's stats. <laughs> If you gotta look it up, if you gotta look it up, that lets you know everything you need to know. If, yeah, like you ain't gotta look at Joe Dumas and Isaiah to know that they were big factors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is crazy. So in 93, 94, he averaged 20. He pretty much averaged, averaged double digits every year until he got to the Bulls. You know what I'm saying? It's like a big post big. injury. Yeah. Post injury. So uh, that stuff matters. <laughs> like it really does matter. Um, like them wars and all that. That's why when you say the greatest of all time, like it ain't. Which not saying you would one that was saying this, Jason. But a mm-hmm. lot of these LeBron fans, <laughs> like, were holding on to like just getting to the finals and being <sighs> undefeated in the first round. Now, like, what are we handing out participation trophies? It's- LeBron mm. is the greatest of all time. Okay, now if you want to just say that, but I'm just saying like the cases, like if you're using the greatest of all time, and we talking about he went to the finals this many times, and he never lost in the first round. That's been the what the, the whole yeah. first round thing is over with. You can't even use that no more. That I don't even know why you was using that in the first. Yeah, place. that's not a good argument anyway. So. Anytime None. I heard that, like that's not even a great argument to even not have. And then he's making all these trips to the finals, but when he comes to the West, <laughs> you're not making all those trips. It's the wild, wild West over here, man. It's a reason why, like, a lot of the champions usually come out the West. None, of, none of them are good arguments for LeBron. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm no like, good. There's no good argument. Because I'm like, bro. Go ahead. Because I'm like, bro, the best that you can come up with, if you say, I'll put it like this. If you say, like, Jerry West, like, Jerry West lost a lot of NBA finals. And imagine you trying to make that argument for Jerry West and just say, well, he made it to, like, 10 (laughs) straight finals. But he only won one. That is an awful argument to have. So, so let's so so who are who are best backcourts in terms of skill? If you had to rank them in terms of skill, and we just talking about point guard and shooting guard, right? Point guard and shooter guard, two on two. Mm. The list the list changes. I think the list definitely changes. Oh, it definitely changes. We're not talking about accolades. We're talking now, about now, now you just talking about Pierce Skid. Now they're on there. They're right. without a doubt, they're on there. Yeah. Near the top, too. Uh, I, I feel like we're gonna leave off some people. Oh, we definitely gonna we, you're gonna leave off somebody. Because you mm. could you could you could bring that uh Catino mm. Mobley and uh, Steve Francis in there. Yeah, that's if we if we're talking about skill. I don't even think they'll be in there. Man, they were a headache to guard. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I cause when you start to break it down, um, they're not ahead of Joe Dumars and them. No. They're not. I, I believe is Luke Mitch, and Kyrie ahead of them? Yes. I believe Mitch Richmond and Tim Hardaway are ahead of them. I think uh-huh. they're both. I think Steve is a better point guard. Is I think it's Luca the X Factor. Yeah. It's like you can find a matchup, but for the well, mm-hmm. but Luca plays the one technically on his team, and Kyrie is the two. But you can find a matchup for Kyrie. It's just that that second player is not going to be better than Luca. It's not going to be better than Luca, and if the second player is better than Luca, it's not going to be the first player is not going to be better than Kyrie. It's like Chris mm-hmm. Paul, Chris Paul, and James Harden. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not gonna be able to match both of them up to my skill for skill. Uh, Chris Paul, but I, but I don't even. But I don't even think that was even the best version of Chris Paul, though. 
What where do Russell Westbrook and James Harden fall on that list? Hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't even think. Know. I don't even think. We talking about Houston and them? I believe they they in there too. See this this is why I'm like John Wall started. and Bradley Beal. See that's another one. See it, it's it's hard <laughs> to really just like break down skill. I think we're gonna have to uh, make a list on that and then come back next week with that. And just see what it's so many of them. That's what I'm saying. So that'll be one of the things that we uh come back with next week. That uh we have our top five uh list of just pure skill backcourts because it's a lot because somebody gonna be left off and somebody gonna feel like we sliding them on that. (laughs) Listen, I'm looking at this game now and I'm thinking, bro, you got. (laughs) I'm looking at Mike Conley and we Mike Conley, Tony Allen, while we're not talking about offense here. That court was no slouch <laughs> when you went to play them boys. True. Oh. Man, it's, it's, mm. it's so many combinations. There's so many combinations. And then a lot of these players, like you said, they played against each other. They this new era of basketball with joining forces is kind of yeah. messed up the list for everybody because you got James Harden and Chris Paul. You got James Harden and Russell Westbrook. You, got, you know what I mean? Like, they start mixing players together. So. It's a, It's been a lot of, like, amazing backcourts, if you really think about it. Like, there have been some real dynamic duos come through the league. When I think about stuff like that, I think about, like, Monte Ellis and Baron Davis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And boys can get buckets. I think that I think that that the Luca and the Kyrie thing is just. I don't think we've seen two one-on-one basketball players like that. Yeah, I agree. Two, two ISO players that where you can, you know, give them the ball at the elbow and they just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, but like I said, we'll come back to it next week because I, I really gotta uh, think about that. I gotta really, really like make a list and just look at some guys. Got to re- need a reminder, like how these guys used to hoop. Yeah, but uh, we got this guy, <laughs> Mister Cap. We got got Mister Fifteen Hundred. To Bernie Matt was Mr. 3000. <laughs> My guy is Mr. 1500. <laughs> I don't know what this man cap. I think we all can agree that this was some of the biggest cap we heard all year. The captain. Cat cap. <laughs> cap alert. Yeah. Some Kaepernick. Kaepernick. <laughs> Captivating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all this good stuff because I don't know. I I just don't know, man. Like, what? We know it just sounds good on it sounds good on TV. You know, it doesn't yeah. even sound good on it TV because it was so it was so it was like just say I get up five hundred shots a day. I can that's more believable. And you, you can see his face that he was about to lie before he lied. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm looking into the sky. I'm trying to figure out a number. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He literally pulled it out of the sky. Like, bro, do you not know how many shots that like a day, bro? Now, if you told if Kobe Bryant told me he did that, I believe it because I know Kobe Bryant's work. Matter of fact, somebody let me. I don't even want to take credit for this because uh, I've seen that in the comment section somewhere. I just can't remember what the Instagram and somebody was like, "Oh, uh, if Kobe Bryant would have said that, uh, y'all would have believed it." He said, "This nigga ain't." Kobe, <laughs> it would have been true. <laughs> like, bro, if Kobe Bryant said it, I would have believed it because the it's like his work ethic was like legendary. Yeah, nigga is Kobe. Like he, he, like he was psychotic. Like him and Jordan was just like on a whole nother level. When the right. trainer said he worked harder than Michael, and Michael worked extremely hard. <laughs> 
So you got to think about how bad Kobe was working, bro. Mm -hmm. Man, you know that there's like a list of like high school like coaches that it's like it's a huge list of high school coaches that opened their gyms up for Kobe like during the season when he wanted to practice in different states and stuff. Like it's it's like a hundred high schools. Something it's it's crazy. Mm. It just he would just go to these places when he needed a gym at two, three o'clock in the morning. Dang. <laughs> you know Are what I'm saying? Open it up. And it was somebody, I forgot who had a playoff run. And they was like, man, I wanted to get shots up. They had a bad game. I wanted to get shots up. So they went to a gym in L.A. And the the, the coach there at the gym was literally like, the last person that asked me to open the gym up was Kobe Bryant. I want to yeah. say it was Steph. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly who it was. But it's like the last person that asked me this was Kobe Bryant. It might have been Dame Lillard. It was something like that. But there's a list of like 100 high schools or something like that. Some That's crazy, crazy. number. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just opened their doors to this man at like three in the morning because he wanted to start his workout. No, and, uh, the, and the pro facilities were closed. That, that tells you a lot, man. I opened the door for him like that's Kobe Bryant, man. Right. It's Kobe. Kobe. Yeah, like right. you get that call, I'm like, bro, I don't care how tired I am. I'm like. One, this may be the only time I ever meet this man. Right. That's one of the main reasons why I will open that. Mm -hmm. So let me go in and do this, man. And I will sit there and just watch the workout. Kobe could have said that he took twenty five hundred shots a day out of believe it. Out of believe it. Because <laughs> I believe he's crazy enough to do it. I truly believe that he's crazy enough to do it. And he worked that hard. You would not convince me. I don't care. Show me video evidence <laughs> that cat shot this. We Steph, got to see it. No. I heard Ray Allen say this. I believe Ray Allen. I heard, I heard and seen. Matter of fact, I heard and seen Ray. I heard and seen Kobe. I heard and seen Steph. And I believe. I didn't even need to see him do it. Because I can tell by the way they shoot. <laughs> Bro, we saw Kobe mess his finger up and literally saw him in the shoot around doing the whole shoot around with the left hand. Yep. <laughs> Come on, man. Like Some stuff we ain't even got it. And we gonna really believe that cat works this hard. There's I'm no glad way. I'm glad they called him out on it though. For real. I'm glad they called him out. Because like I said, a lot of players say stupid stuff like this and people believe him just because they in the nba it's like yeah cat he you know he taking fit like no he's not he's not no he's not they're playing <laughs> every other night it's the playoffs bro you're not you having to travel where are you getting where are you even find the time yeah you're not built like that you're not getting off the plane going to the gym you're not yeah. no you got a podcast yeah otherwise yeah. you wouldn't be 14 percent from the to give Cat credit, tonight he went nine for 13 and four for uh, five from the three point line. So maybe he did get those 1500 yes, last game. Because now, he, after he said it and everybody called Cap, he went to the gym and got him. And actually got it up. 25. And I, I know there's going to be a running joke on uh, TNT. <laughs> like, oh, he actually got those shots up because now he's yeah. shooting. And just to uh, give a little quick uh, recap of tonight's game, uh, doing a recording, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves survived game four, 105 to 100. Cat actually came to play tonight. And man, uh, had a good performance, one assist away from uh, triple double. Bad shooting night from Kyrie and Luca. Yeah. And they only lost by five. Yeah, that tells game. you all, that tells you a whole lot. <laughs> Again, just like every other game in the series, it came down to final seconds down the stretch. I saw Luca miss some free throws, yep. like they were big free throws. Yeah, uh, and they yeah. actually and I, and I checked it while uh, we were talking about the other thing. They only missed two free throws the whole night, but that was a crucial one. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. 
that lets you know they were uh, actually doing good yeah. during the game. But you can't expect uh, Luca and Kyrie to both have bad shooting games like that. If you're expecting them to have four straight, let's just say if it go to seven games, you cannot expect them both to have four straight bad shooting games. So it's going to be a different Kyrie and Luca come game five. But at least we have some more basketball because a nine-day layoff is long (laughs) when you only have – Baseball, yeah, and the oh, WNBA for sure. But isn't it crazy that you know Luca has like twenty eight, and we like, yeah, he had a bad night, right? <laughs> well, it, it was the, it, it, well, it was the amount of shots that he took. Yeah, that, that it's, way. Just, it's just crazy. And look, like I've been saying, Cat has to score at least twenty every game. If he scores nineteen, they lose by one. Mm-hmm. Mm. And that was I say, Cat is a big key man, and. He really needs to show up, I believe, for his legacy sake. After saying what he said and he came out here and played bad, he had to do something. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he stepped up, but it's literally just one game. You got to win four straight to uh, go to the NBA final. I don't expect Cat to just do that, but even if he doesn't, that game saved him from the embarrassment that he would have had. Oh, they yeah. would have been. Ooh. Yeah, if he had laid an egg, he would. They would never get over. I think they would have to get rid of. Him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They would have traded, or or he would have been on that uh on that block. Not not say he'd be on the trading block, but they would just like he close to it. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Butler. Jimmy Butler almost got him up out of there. Yep, with, with that. That practice story. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm about to say Jimmy Jimmy uh need to be on his on cat man. No homo. But um and no offense to anybody. No but um uh, but um uh, cat was just soft during that time. He's still soft now. But um he was just a whole nother player, man. I don't know, man. He, I don't know, a lot of number one picks. I don't know, man. He's 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 talented, bro. He just like yeah. sometimes he just don't act like he's that talented, he, he's which a, bothers me. It, it, it think that's what bothers everybody is because you have the size, you have the skill, and you just yeah. sometimes you just play small. You, he got that LeBron James mentality. Mm-hmm. That's why I don't like okay, LeBron James. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh my bad, but but I'm just saying that's, like, that's what I that's that's my problem with LeBron James. You got well, LeBron speak. actually shows up. He LeBron has games that that he has shown up in. I can promise you. I put it like this: If he did not, uh, 2012, when uh, if they would have lost to Boston, that would hurt his legacy in a big way. But he had that crazy game six, that legendary oh game God. six. <clears throat> and I was like, bro, this man cannot miss. <laughs> this that's, man cannot miss. Yeah, that, that's saved what, his, that saved his legacy. That's what I'm saying. Like, you get you get these flashes where you see him capable of doing this. And then yep. you turn around and you get these other games where it's like, bro, we know you capable. That's how I feel about Cat. That's how I feel about LeBron James. It's like. Well, I wouldn't even it's, really... it's want to almost. It's like, do you want to win? Exactly. I, 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 I question whether you want it. <laughs> I would. I, I think I'll give LeBron a whole lot more credit than Cat because I've seen LeBron uh, actually step up. They may take the loss, but he actually stepped up to the plate. The one thing that hurts his argument, well, is it was a lot of reasons that hurt his argument for the goat, but one of the a stain that he can't even correct was that 2011 uh, NBA Finals. Okay, can't you can't you can't correct that. I don't yeah. care what nobody say. Bro. I truly man, and I just seen it. the only reason why I brought that up because I seen somebody uh, say you put Kobe Bryant on that team against the Mavs, they're winning that final. But somebody said 
they got swept by those same masks. And I was like, <laughs> they didn't have Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosch either. Right. Yeah. I just think we should really be looking like in just based on like skill and size, we really should be looking at Cat the same way we look at MB. But they, yeah. they he has the same capabilities, he has the same sort of skills, dominant skill set, but he just he he's just soft. He won't put the ball on the floor. Yeah, he's just off. But he can, though. He can, yeah. Well, her MB, I still get an edge to – I'm definitely giving the edge to her MB. Oh, for sure. Yeah. The yeah. only thing that really – what really hurt him last season, you win MVP. And in the history of the MVP award, you had the lowest points per game in playoff history, and you just didn't show up at all. Right. And you weren't even – you wasn't hurt. You just didn't show up. <laughs> he may have been hurt, but I doubt it. Like, that was that was bad. Like, that's hurting your legacy type stuff. Yeah. But it's just worse than that. Like, like it's when players it's, – it's when people question whether players got that dog in them. Right. Yep. I don't mm-hmm. see that in cat, and, and and for me, when you define that, it's just want to. I mean, yeah, is whether you want to. Do you want to be the greatest? Do you want to win? The players that I look at that that display that are usually in the context conversation for all time greats, and they untouchable. Yeah, the Michael Jordans, the Kobe Bryant's, Magic Johnsons. These players want to. Larry Bird's that you you see it like want to. I don't see that from Cat. I see it from Anthony Edwards, despite him struggling mm-hmm. sometimes. I don't never question whether he wants to win. When I watch Cat play, I question, like, does this dude really want to even be out here on the floor right now? And a lot of times when uh, ant Man struggling, it's usually because, like, everybody's on – they keyed on him. Right. And now he has to <laughs> worry about everybody else making shots. And if they ain't making shots, it's just like, all right, now what you going to do? Right. Now I got to force up some shots because y'all can't make no shots. Right. Right. So, yeah, big win for them. We going to see, but yada, yada, yada. I know uh, one thing I wanted to talk about, and it's not even sports related. It was just funny because I just seen it on my timeline. I know y'all seen the thing with uh, Vivica A. Fox. I didn't see it. Okay. If I y'all saw have, her, but I didn't watch it. It was a thing with uh, – I haven't watched the video either. But all I needed to do was just read the headlines. 60 year old Vivica A. Fox wants to get married. Okay. All right. That's cool. Mm-hmm. I was just, I thought it was so funny because I was like, I wanted to shine that uh Kevin Samuel <laughs> thing in the hill. I'm like, that shit done sell, man. I don't know who you I don't know who you think you about to marry. It ain't gonna be nobody you want to. You may want it's, to, but you got to pay them. I ain't gonna lie, man. I ain't gonna say that. Go ahead, say it, Ted. Say it, Ted. <laughs> I saw the interview. I ain't watch it, but I saw her talking. Look, you know, Facebook can show the clip of them talking. Yeah, you got to match the little speaker to hear it. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't match the speaker. I just saw it, and I was like, she went from like a ten to a two. <laughs> yeah. So, so now to know that when she was well, on that talking. Older. Uh, okay. Do do we want to we want to start comparing some celebrities that are her age? Yeah. Well, no, 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 exactly. Everybody, but everybody, we we can't expect everybody to look like that now. Man, no, no, she wait, y'all about to get me in trouble again. I'm not going down this road. No, man, man, we'll, 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 we'll talk. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. All right, we'll, matter of fact, let's get You're off right. this topic. Let's get off this topic. <laughs> I know I'm trying I'm, to drag me down there. No, 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 you, you drag yourself down there. <laughs> uh, 
Golden Brick Road. Just, just, just out of curiosity, okay, you said she's she, you said she's sixty. She, if if I if if I read that headline right, she's sixty. Okay. I just want to get some ammunition for my conversation. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it, bro. She's Stop. sixty. She looked better than seventy five of the WNBA. Run on Cunha, <laughs> run on Cunha, man. Get well soon. I don't even want to talk about it. it just I see a lot of little Kim in here. Make, 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 it makes me sick that you that our season. I don't know where the Braves is going right now, bro. This is just embarrassing. We lost our starting pitcher and we lost our best player. It's just if we win this. We, we're gonna have to make some trades. We're gonna have to do something. Yeah, I think we have to. Yeah, Anth- Alex Anthopoulos has to make something shake at this point. Cause we asking a lot out of certain people. A lot of guys got to step up. Mike Harris got to step up. Matt Olson has to step up. It's gonna be like the championship run when we went on it. Uh, a lot of guys stepped up. Yeah. That's the Braves, though, right? Like they they yeah. are they are one of those teams that. Despite what happens, they they usually are very resilient for whatever yeah. reason. They they can they feel the good team regardless yeah. of the circumstances. I, mean, I, I fully to expect them to be competitive, bro. Yeah, they're a proud but, franchise. But but we need somebody. Yeah, Azuna, somebody got to step up. Sure, Azuna, uh has stepped up this year. He has stepped up tremendously. But we we're gonna need like we're gonna Austin definitely Riley. need pitch, pitching pitching. We're going to see, man. It's, it's a, of course, it's a long season in baseball. But it, oh, bro, it, that, that one hurts. I just wanted to uh, talk about that for a second. I don't even want to get into it because it's a long season. It ain't really too much to talk about with baseball. You got 162 games, and that's a lot of games to play. Dang, that's, that's the exact number of people that was at the Atlanta Dream last <laughs> home game. That's crazy. What a coincidence. <laughs> on the head. All right, ladies and gentlemen. That, that will conclude episode 38. <laughs> right. We gonna um as always let everybody shout out uh their pages, they uh their social media pages and what they got going on. Be on the lookout for. We're gonna start with Tess. My so guy. man, for no image right there. Same old, you- same old man. Uh you know, we we get ready for I guess the Olympics, man. You know, I'm 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 starting to uh look at my my uh Olympic sheets and make my predictions there. Uh, but yeah, same old, same old man. Follow me, Proto Image. <laughs> Did you go to Did you go to that game, Jason? Nah. Oh, okay. Not so, this one. I just counted. It just took me twelve minutes to count all the people that was. So going. you gonna you gonna shout out your information? Here's <laughs> 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 the game. <laughs> I just I just want to thank the Atlanta Dream for everything that they do in the oh, community. They, um. <laughs> Yeah, you can follow me at Crowd Noise Sports <laughs> on YouTube or Jason Bernard official on oh, Instagram. Man. Don't cancel me. You you gonna bring it up this week, man? Or you still waiting? I'm I'm still waiting. Unlike people who are, attempt to get tickets for the Atlanta <laughs> Dream, you can walk right on in. <laughs> <laughs> I know who they win. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, I'm Brinsky Shaw for the Shaw Shooters <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Appreciate everybody for uh, showing up. We drop every Wednesday. Appreciate all the support. We almost at uh, 500 subscribers. <laughs> Hopefully, before next week, we'll be at 500 subscribers. So hey. keep, keep supporting the uh, podcast. And one day, we'll make it to the skybox if you keep subscribing to the channel. Also, Atlanta Dream, if you want to invite me to a game, <laughs> I don't have nothing to do with what this man say. He is his own man. I can't control nothing that he's saying. He is his own man. <laughs> Thank you so much for all that you do for Atlanta. Thank you. But 
But uh, appreciate everybody. I already told you I'm not going to end the pod the way I always end it until football season, and I'm keeping my word. So, as always, we'll catch y'all next week. Peace. Peace.